Well, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremy Williams representing Garden City Ammonia Program. Today, I'm going to bring you another uh, R717 video tip of the day. And what we'll be discussing is the ability to test what we call a high-level float. Uh, it's a mechanical ball float that rises on the buoyancy of liquid and has a closing contact switch that could disactivate equipment such as compressors for a safety shutdown. Uh, we'll be getting into how to test them and when to test them. And uh, this will be a, a short video, R717 tip of the day, but nevertheless, it's very, very important. Uh, would like to just make a few announcements before we get into this. Yesterday, uh, GCAP launched a new website and i um, going to help try to support it. It's dreamcareer101.com. Um, we've always posted jobs for the industry for free. Uh, we typically did them on our ammonia website, and most of the jobs the last 18 years were ammonia refrigeration based. Uh, with GCAP growing, our specialty trades are growing, so uh, we've grown into uh, posting boiler jobs, safety jobs, electricians jobs, wastewater jobs, all kinds of different jobs. We don't care if it's a job related to maintenance that's involved with the industrial food industry, whether it's production, manufacturing, uh, we'll post the jobs for you. And uh, so that's Dream Career. 101.com and uh, we also got a Facebook page called Blue Collar Jobs Industrial Maintenance and uh, come check it out and give it a like. So let me reverse the camera around and I'm uh, going to talk about testing high level floats. This right here is an example of a high level float. Uh, what you see is a cutaway. I'm going to put my finger there where the mechanical ball is on the inside. It's a buoyancy ball. On top we have closing contacts and this whole thing slides off so you have the rod that continues up and if I put the camera up underneath there you'll see that the stem will be able to go up in there and we just have a latching switch that when the ball typically rises by the buoyancy of liquid so I'm going to rise it up and when that happens you'll see that the magnetic switch closed. So this has to be tested every year and when we look at this annual test uh, you'll find the IIAR and many other associations out there that will say that and all safety switches must be tested on an annual basis. And we have some problems with that because a lot of people out there will test it what I would consider only a halfway test. Essentially what they'll do is they'll come up, reverse this around, maybe give that a tap and when it taps is that contact makes close and whatever was supposed to shut down or activate at that point they could test but what they're only testing does the switch have the ability to move another test that some people will do will take this entire top portion off turn it sideways because all it is is that little set screw right there that holds it on that little ream there and test to see if that works well again all you're doing is testing the switch the switch must be tested by the activation of the float and the only way that you're actually going to get the float to rise is to actually have liquid. So some people out there will say, well, it's way too dangerous to take that tank all the way up. If you look at the dual sight glasses, let me come away this way because of the light. If you look at the double sight glasses within about six inches of each other, you see the float coming off. And that tank would be about 80% full. So, you know, there is an easy way especially if you're dealing with the pump package and um, looking at this pump package we've got the two buffalo pumps coming off of it this is the main discharge coming off the main discharge you'll see our last weld that we put into the system yesterday this is coming up to valve A23 A23 is the sight glass column you just simply close that valve which is the equalization to the column and using your pumps you'll fill up the entire column with liquid Filling that column with liquid would then get the ball to rise. The tank would stay at whatever level you had before. Just remember when you're doing the safety uh, step, you would need a procedure. Part of that procedure would be about closing off liquid resupply to your vessel. A lot more is taught in that in GCAP's ITM class, Inspection, Testing, and Maintenance for Ammonia Federation Systems. If you come and take the Regigap course, we'll also get into some of those details, specifically talking on that particular concept. Uh, so remember, dreamcareer101.com. Uh, post a job for you if your companies need it. We had a huge feedback last week when we started the campaign uh, for posting some of these jobs. Literally, companies right now, it's best time to fill your departments. There's thousands of people out there just itching to get to work. We all got to get back to work. We got to get this economy back online. We got to quit living in fear and start living life and let God take care of the things that He needs to take care of. 
And uh, we can't wait to have more people coming back to Garden City, Kansas. Next Monday starts another class kicking off. we got a boot camp class kicking off on Friday of next week. And uh, our online courses, on-site courses, everything's starting to slowly come back around. And uh, we're getting really, really excited. Uh, just to give you a sneak peek of what's all been done here, a lot of happening. Starters, we have these commissions. USPI oil filtration systems are hooked in. Oil pots on the high-pressure receiver thermal siphon are all in. Today, me and my pops will be commissioning the microprocessors. Um, we'll be jumping some ammonia juice in it this afternoon, doing our last final pressure test. She's under vacuum right now. Count the microns a little bit later. But until we see each other again, I hope that everybody has a good day, a good week, and uh, keep it in the pipes. Take care.